Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at additional general business credits and specifically, we're going to be looking at research activities credit. Now, we did talk about research deduction in a prior session and in this session, we're going to see how research activities or research expenditure create a business credit for us. So this is part of the general business credit. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my students, which is you and my viewers, to connect with me on a professional as well, on a, as, well as a personal level. Life is too short. Let's get to know each other. How about that? Okay. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should have a LinkedIn account. It's good for your professional image and you will connect with other professionals in your industry. If you are a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you connect, you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. This way you will have access to all new uh, lectures um, as I post them. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. And this is my um, Twitter handle, Farhat Lectures. And I do also have a website where I house all my lectures organized by chapter so it's easier to navigate. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this type of recording, you could view hundreds of hours of video lectures plus thousands of multiple plus review thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution. If you're a CPA student or if you're a college student taking accounting courses, it's a great resource for you to supplement your college studies with simulation, textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards. So basically you'll be supplementing your current courses and preparing for the CPA exam. If you happen to choose Jaeger, use the PMF code and you will get 10% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So let's talk about research activities credit. Research activities credit is gonna be compromised of three credits, incremental research activities credit, basic research credit and energy research credit. And if you know me, every time I have a list of things, I'm gonna go ahead and discuss each one of them separately, starting with incremental research activities credit. So how much do you get in a credit for the incremental research activities? The credit amount equal to 20% times a qualified expenditure minus a base amount. So we're gonna take the qualified expenditure minus a base amount. Now this base amount, that's gonna appear with us again and again, maybe a couple times. What is the base amount? It's, a, it's an amount that's going to be given to you. The company will tell you what that amount is. Now, don't ask me how the company comes up with that because in the real world, just it's something beyond the scope of an income tax course. But for the purpose of the CPA exam, for the purpose of your studies, this amount will be provided to you. Okay, so but what are qualified expenditure? Well, because qualified expenditure are right here. We have to subtract them from the base amount. Expenditure qualify if the research relate to the discovery of technological information intended for the use in developing a new or improved business component for the taxpayer. So what we're looking here for the incremental research is for, for the discovery of technological info, something that's gonna help the business of the taxpayer. Okay. The incremental research credit is not allowed if the research is conducted once the commercial production begins. Once the once you have a once you have a viable product and it's being commercialized, it's no longer research. You cannot deduct those expenses. Surveys and studies such as market research, testing, and routine, not acceptable. Not acceptable for disqualifying research. Research conducted outside the US, the Puerto Rico, or US territory is not acceptable. Research for in the social science, art, and humanities. I'm sorry, not acceptable. Here we are talking about technological innovation. Expenditure qualify fully if they are done in-house. So if you incur that expenditure in-house, it's 100% qualified expenditure. If you hire an outsider, then you will, uh, then 65% of the re research is uh, is qualified research. Now you might be saying, why would you why would you hire an outsider? I know my wife, she's in the pharmaceutical industry. She works with J&J &J, and previously she worked with Sanofi Pasteur. So she, she she's very familiar with research and most big companies, most large companies, now they outsource the research. It's much, much cheaper. And you're gonna see how they do it. When we talk about the basic research, I will revisit this topic. Just wanna let you know that it's cheaper for the company to do so, okay? And it's less risk. So let's take a look at an example. Javiera incurs the following research expenditure. In-house wages, supplies, and computer time, 50,000. That's fully qualified expenditure. 
paid to cut an edge scientific a contractor 30,000 the 30,000 it's only 65 percent of it all in all we have 69,500 of research expenditure now how do we treat research expenditure so we figure out the amount how do we treat this well if you remember what we can do we can do three things we can expense it fully we can capitalize it or we can basically uh, capitalize then amortize basically defer those are the three options and technically those three options in a sense they are still available to us but what's going to happen now we're going to have we can combine them with a credit so this is what's going to happen so we can take a full credit and reduce the expense deduction by the credit amount so one option to do is to compute the credit and anything that's left ex expense as a deduction or we can take the full expense deduction and reduce the credit and you will see how in a moment taking 100 percent times the credit times the maximum corporate tax rate um, of 21 percent that's another option or take the full credit and capitalize research expense and amortize over 60 months so basically we'll take the full credit and any and capitalize the research expense and amortize basically credit capitalize amortize so those are the, the three options basically okay so jake a calendar year taxpayer incurs qualified research expenditure of 200,000 at the beginning of the year if jake base amount is 120 well the amount above the incremental is 80,000 we're going to multiply this by 20 percent it's going to give us 16,000 tax credit 16,000 tax credit okay now this is one option what are the other options remember we said so we know now the 16,000 tax credit but is that the only thing that we can do not at all remember we have those three options the other options is to take the full credit Remember, we incur 200,000 in qualified expenditure. Of this 200,000, we figure out we have a 16,000 credit. That's fine. We can take the credit and anything that's left, 184,000, we can deduct. So take the credit and deduct what's the, the what's left, basically. Deduct what's left. That's one option for us. That's one option for us. Okay? The other option is to, to take the full deduction. So this is option one. The second option is to take the full deduction, which is 200,000, then take the credit minus 21%, which is the corporate tax rate times the credit, and reduce that amount by, you know, 16,000, re reduce it by 21% times the credit, which will give us, you will take a credit of 12,640. So that's another option. That is another option, okay? And uh, the third option is to take the full credit now, and amortize the remainder over 60 months so notice you do have a few options in how you and how you treat the expenses slash expend expenditure okay the next credit we're going to look at is the basic research credit so everything we were talking about was the incremental research credit now the, the basic research the basic research credit so what is the basic research credit well the basic research credit is an additional 20 percent credit allowed on the basic research payment and access of a base amount again we're going to have a base amount if you pay more than that base amount you will have you will have that you will have that credit okay so what's the basic research it's basic research payment what are the basic research payment it's amount paid in cash to qualified basic research organizations such as colleges or university or tax exempt organization operated primarily to conduct scientific research remember what i told you earlier that most pharmaceutical companies nowadays what they're doing again according to my wife because she's in this industry what they're doing is they're conducting the research by outsourcing the research and one way to outsource the research is to give money to college and universities where they have an important um, research and development lab and tell them look here's some one two three million dollars why don't you conduct the research if something comes out of it we take credit you'll maybe get a bonus otherwise it's your money to use okay so it's so it's much cheaper to pay phd students rather than hire full-time researcher and some of them they're even outsourcing it outside the country outside the u.s Okay, so that is what basic research payment. So a basic research is the original investigation for the advancement of scientific knowledge, not having not having a specific commercial substance. So you're not really you're not really making a viable product. You're just 
you know, trying to advance scientific knowledge. You don't have a specific commercial objective in mind, but hopefully you'll come up with an idea, a good idea. The definition excludes basic research conducted outside the U.S. And as I told you, those companies are going outside the U.S. If you go outside the U.S., forget about this basic research credit. And basic research and social science, art, and humanities, sorry, any money paid for that, that's not, that doesn't qualify for the basic research credit, just like the incremental research credit. So let's take a look at an example. Orange Corporation pays $75,000 to a university for a basic research. Orange base amount for the basic research credit is $50,000, just given to us. The basic research credit activity allowed is the incremental, which is 75 minus 50 times 20%, which is 5,000. The 50,000 base amount for the basic research also can be deducted as a research expense so that's you don't lose it you would use it with conjunction with the credit energy research credit straightforward the credit is intended to stimulate additional energy research that's the purpose of it the credit amount is 20 percent of the amount paid or incurred by the taxpayer to an energy research consortium for energy research so basically to to encourage companies to uh, to conduct that research uh, energy research give them 20 percent credit Let's take a look at this example just to kind of start to put those numbers together. Allison incurs the following research expenditure, in-house wages, in-house supplies. Those are going to be qualified expenditure 100%, paid to ABC Inc. for research services. This is an outsider. I'm sorry, only 65%. So, 65,000. So, what's the qualified research expenditure? It's 65,000 plus 65% of 80,000. And that's going to give us, all in all, 117000 of qualified research expenditure. If the taxpayer amount is 50000 what's the Allison incremental research? 117 minus 50. And that's times 20%. And that's going to be 13000 400. Now, remember this 13400 It can be used in conjunction with other... Um, with other deductions, but this is the basically the research that we are looking at. Okay, Tom, a calendar year, calendar year taxpayer informs you that during the year he incurs expenditure of 40000 that qualify for incremental research activities credit. In addition, Tom, research credit base amount for the year is 3250 Determine Tom's incremental research activities credit for the year. Well, Tom incurred 40000 the base amount is 32800 the difference is 7200 we multiply this by 20% and that's going to give us a credit of 1440 that's it tom is in a 25% tax bracket determine which approach to the research expenditure and the research activities credit other than capitalization would provide the greatest tax benefit obviously capitalization will defer it that's why we won't so here they're asking us to to look at alternatives. What are, the alter what are the alternatives for us? If you go back to the slide here, what I told you, you have full credit and reduction amount and take the deduction as a reduction amount, or you take reduced credit and full deduction. So we're gonna have basically take either option one or option two. Option three is the capitalization said so that will give you the least amount of benefit now. So either option one and option two. So what is option one and option two? Okay, based on this exercise. Option one, let's start with option one. Option one, take the full credit. So option one, we have a credit of 1440. And what's left is we're gonna take 40, so we're gonna take full credit, reduce um, reduce the uh, uh, 40,000 by the credit, 1440. That's gonna keep us with 38,560. We're gonna take this amount and that's gonna save us 24% on our taxes, it's going to be taken as a deduction. That's going to give us an additional tax benefit of 9254. So 1440 as credit plus 9254. That's going to give us a total tax benefit of 10,694. Oops. This is option one. This is our tax benefit. Choice two. What is choice two? Choice two is to take the full deduction. 40,000 times 24%, okay, and that's going to give us 9,600, then, then reduce our tax, our tax credit, our tax credit is 1440, and we're going to be reducing it by 1440 
times 21%. So 1440 minus 1440 times 21%, that's going to give us 1,000... 1,138. Therefore, if we take 9,600 plus 1,138, that's going to be 8, 3, 7, that's 10,738. This is option 2. This is option 1. Well, obviously, option 2 is better, and it's better by approximately, if my math is right, better by $44. Not, not that much of a difference, nevertheless, it's better. But if we're adding zeros, right, <laughs> then it might make a difference, okay? So option two, obviously, is better. So what should we do? We should expense the 40000 and reduce our tax credit, okay? Take the second option, basically. I hope this, this recording emphasized the research activities credit for you. The point to remember here is you have many options when it comes to research and research activities. You can expense, you can capitalize, you can defer, and you can use the credit in conjunction with those options. Um, now, this is going to be available. All these options will be available to 2021. Then going forward from there, you're going to have to capitalize and amortize. So your options will be a little bit less limited. If you have any questions, <coughs> sorry, please email me. If you happen to be studying for your CPA, visit my website for additional lectures. If you happen to do so, please consider donating. In the next session, we'll look at additional tax credit that are deals with the general business credit, which is research activities was part of that. But we're going to look at one, two, three, four, five more uh, general business tax, tax, tax credit. I'm not saying those are everything, but those are the main ones. Good luck, study hard, and see you on the other side.